have Barista Abdullahi Fati. He will be my guest on the show tonight. Barista Fati, thank you for joining me on my show. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for the, in the, for the invitation. Thank you very much. So let's begin with the more, most important issue on, 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 on for tonight. Uh, you represented Moru Sabari. Yes. Uh, in, in, in court uh, regarding his case against the mm -hmm. Independent Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. In terms of the verdict that came from the High Court, do you agree? I respect the decision of the High Court. Um, I, I, I think the, the decision was overly generous of how the court applied the relevant um, constitutional provision uh, in relation to uh, qualification. Um, do I entirely agree with it? Um, I agree with some parts, I disagree with some, but, but we, we do not intend to appeal because of the, the, the shortage of time. What are the parts that you, you do not agree to? Okay, if you look at um, that, that specific provision um, of the Constitution uh, of the Gambia, Section 90 sub 1E, is, is very similar uh, to the Ghanaian Constitution as well. So if you look at it, it looks like uh, perhaps the AFPRC uh, were influenced by Jerry Rawlings at the time. So, so it, you know, the, the, the words are almost like for like. Um, and I believe qualification and disqualification for, for National Assembly membership, as well as to run for office of president, uh, these are important. It's not to be taken lightly. So the, the requirements ought to be applied to the latter. Uh, but the, the, the disqualification ought to be applied equally uh, to the latter. And I do not think that, that what the, the, the Janet Commission finding stated and what is um, provided in the Constitution are, are consistent. I believe that there is a gap, um, and, and, and that gap always ought to be resolved in favor of what is contained in the, in the Constitution. So therefore, I believe that if you strictly apply the law, and I believe such laws ought to be strictly applied, because otherwise uh, somebody's qualification, disqualification can be left at one individual's discretion. Okay, this is not a discretionary matter. It is simply application of the law as contained either in the Elections Act or over relevant um, uh, uh, acts as well as the Constitution. So, so um, there's nowhere contained in the, in the Janet Commission that, that Momodo Sabali unlawfully acquired state resources or defrauded the state or misused or abused his position or acted in a manner that was prejudicial to the interests of the state. So to arrive at that conclusion without those words being expressly stated in the Janet Commission is that one will have to make an inference. And I do not believe that one ought to make an inference when making a serious determination of this, of this nature. But, but, but there's this issue of aiding and abetting in crime. The Janet Commission held that somebody aided and abetted the pilfering of state resources. Okay. Uh, you know, primarily what the Janet Commission is saying, that he facilitated the withdrawals of, of, of sums. Um, but withdrawal, facilitating withdrawals, and that, that is a portion where they actually stated that his conduct as, as Secretary General, uh, what he did was, was sort of the standard was ordinarily expected. But, 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 but these do not equate to, to unlawfully acquiring state resources or, or defrauding the state or misusing abuse in one's office. Uh, whether that equ equates um, acting in a manner that was prejudicial to the interest of the state, uh, unless that was expressly stated in the commission. Otherwise, what happens is one can look at this and, and, and infer that it makes uh, it, it you know, this is the meaning. But also in relation to it in a betting, that is. That is uh, of a of a criminal threshold because that is that is that is anchored on. So if you if you if you charge with it, that is a criminal charge. So if you look at actually defrauding, unlawfully acquiring, abuse of unlawful, these are all criminal elements. So therefore, and and the Janet Commission was not a criminal court. Um, it was simply a fact finding um, institution. I'm not trying to devalue truth commissions. I work at the TRRC. Um, I, 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 I helped to put together TRRC recommendation report. So, so I know the importance of commission finding report. I'm not trying to in any way to undermine the work of truth commission, uh, of commissions in general. But, but, but 
if somebody is to be disqualified from running for president or from running for, for the National Assembly, um, I think the Constitution or, or the act that the IAC is relying on ought to be strictly applied. That, that, is our, that was our argument at the, at the court. Uh, yet you went to court and mm -hmm. the court agreed with the Independent Electoral Commission that mm -hmm. Sabali is not qualified mm -hmm. to get nominated and to run the contest. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of uh, the whole entire exercise, the lawsuit, the legal battle, would you say that, because it was so obvious in terms of the section that, that, that the Independent Electoral Commission mm -hmm. relied on, mm -hmm. even the lay person would <laughs> say, this is very clear, yeah. as clear as day, so mm -hmm. would you say that this was almost, almost an exercise in futility? It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, uh, that, is, that is the interesting part, you know, face value, you know, it was really daunting task. Face value, you look at it and thinking, um, this is going to be almost like, like an uphill battle. But um, it wasn't. You know, actually, the, in, you know, when the judge was reading his ruling, there was a part that he agree, agreed with us. There's a part of the ruling which he, he actually agreed with our position of the law. Then the next sentence he said, however, that the actions of the IEC cannot be made, deemed to be fatal. Okay, so, so that also tells you that there was some merit in, in, in our argument. There was some merit in, in how we um, argued that that relevant provision ought to be, uh, ought to be um, applied. The ruling was quite extensive uh, for, for this matter. I think this was a straightforward matter. And, and I think the judge really looked at all the issues. And the fact that it took long, it was a long ruling, that means it wasn't really an exercise in fertility. Otherwise, um, you know, this would have been a, a five-minute ruling where the matter would have been dismissed uh, without, without merit. But the judge actually looked at the substance. So I think a lot of people would have been surprised. So, so without looking at the ruling, one would ordinarily think that um, <laughs> we knew this was going to happen. But, but I, I believe it wasn't like that. You know, the fact that it was a lengthy ruling, the fact that it was substantively analyzed by the judge, that means there was a high degree of merit in our, in our position. And, and, our, and our position is, is, you know, not only for Sabali, but for anybody else. I think, because again, when, 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 I was, when we were preparing to go to court, um, I looked at so many scenarios of exactly a similar nature in Ghana and Sierra Leone. In Ghana, individuals after the Jerry Rawlings uh, government came to power, so commission of inquiry were set up. Individuals were banned from holding public office. Uh, they went to court. And, and there were some rulings in favor of those individuals. And what the court said um, is that these are not light things. If you're going to tell somebody that you cannot run for parliament, it's not a light decision. So it has to be really backed uh, by, by evidence. And also, that has to be contrasted with one's fundamental right under Section 26 to, to, to not only to, to, to register, but to actually participate. Um, to contest in, in elections uh, and stuff like it. So, so to actually restrict somebody's right under the constitution um, it, it, it shouldn't be taken in, in light measure. So, so these things are never really black and white. But, but for the purposes of Savali, uh, this the application before the court was merely concerned with the nomination rejection. The substantive appeal in relation to the Janet Commission is still before the Court of Appeal that we, we're still pursuing. Uh, and, 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 and if that goes in favor of Mr. Sabali, um, it wouldn't have had any impact on, on, on the National Assembly uh, election because um, you know, he couldn't run anyway. But, but it, it may have consequence on, 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 on the next election. And, and we have hope in, in that. Why are you not interested in appealing? I think you, know, you, you have to look at these things and you have to be realistic. Um, we're going to the polls uh, this Saturday. So, so if the matter were to go to the Court of Appeal, you have three judges at the Court of Will who have to sit as a panel look over this. You have to put together the, the record. It has to be typed. Everything has to be put together. And, um, and so it, it, time is an enemy. Ta ta time is an enemy. Time is really an enemy here. Alternatively, we could have gone to the Supreme Court and asked for review strictly on the law, um, provided we are able to pass the threshold. Supreme Court judges can, can look at it. But that is not in terms of fact. It's simply look at whether the judge was correct on the law or not. But again, it's a panel in order to um, put together a panel within a very short time. It's, it's, again, like I said, time is an enemy. Hence, we decided um, we may have to, uh, have to leave this battle to, to another day, to another jurisdiction. How about the issue of the, the, the mild drama, if you like, that happened in court? 
the judge was supposed to sit at 12.30. Mm -hmm. That was this live UDP crowd, and the judge mm -hmm. is saying that everybody needs to be seated, mm -hmm. otherwise he's not going to uh, uh, commence uh, sessions, and he had to walk out. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, uh, actually, what happened is, um, I think around 12.25, um, he finished with the previous matter that he was dealing with, so there was a five-minute gap, and obviously, a judge do, do not sit waiting um, idly. So, so, uh, but just before that happened, some the UDP people came in, and there, there was there was noise. I have to admit. Um, so he told them um, that they have to clear the the, the exit um, so that he can go back to his chambers in order to come back at the right time um, and told them otherwise he you know if, if there was no we didn't clear the way he wasn't gonna um, he wasn't gonna come back um, but you know ordinarily yes those people ought not to come to court with banners and stuff like that but but this is politics uh, and I think the you know when we went to George's, the judge chambers he said this he wasn't actually mad at the supporters at all I can tell you frankly so when myself the lawyer for the IEC and the lawyer for the attorney general went to his chambers he was simply saying that it wasn't only for his security but for our security as well he was just simply saying these are election matters and and they are highly emotional um, and you know it was better that we had some form of security to make sure that that all of us were safe so that that was the, the, the primary reason why he, he was in chambers and there was delay uh, and also, you, I mean, you prevailed regarding the issue of cost. I mean, why was it your contention that Saole should not be charged for wasting the court's time? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, actually, this, the, the, the lawyer for IEC should never have asked for cost. Why? Um, okay. In, in civil... But they saw this as a waste of the court. Actually, they did. They did. Because if you look at their affidavits, they said this, and I'm going to use their word, they said this was a, a malicious, frivolous, and, vex, and a vexatious. Um, it's not, no, they, those, these are big words. They're not my words. They are the words of the IEC. Um, but no, but, 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 but I mean, seriously, um, and I think the, that's why the judge agreed. See, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a democracy and where the rule of law prevails, when public officials exercise this, their powers and functions, if citizens are dissatisfied, I think citizens should have the power and the right to go to court. You know, on the IJME, we knew that it was difficult to go to court because sometimes, because people felt that, that their matters were predetermined, so they, they, were, they felt discouraged. So, so when people take these matters to court, like for example, in the Rohimalik law case, or the diaspora registration, or the 54 million loan, uh, and several other cases as well, uh, either by individuals or by civil society, if these matters are taken to court um, and, and, and the, it, the applicants do not win and the court turn around and award cost against individuals, um, you are almost in a way indirectly discouraging because especially if the costs are high, some other people may, may believe that there is a legitimate claim to take to court, but they're thinking um, we're struggling for money, and, and if our matter is dismissed or we do not win, um, cost will be will be applied. So, so I think the judge was right because in this in this matters concerning constitution or, or elections, um, the IEC is an independent um, institution in all of this. Whether Sabali is is nominated or not, whether Sabali is elected or not, has nothing to do with the interest of the IEC or the Attorney General. Because the Attorney General being the, the principal legal advisor of the government or public, but is simply to advise on law. So the IEC as well, um, they, they have no interest whatsoever in how many candidates. So, 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 so when individuals, so actually they should encourage that when, when candidates are dissatisfied, um, just like in the Dr. Ismail Asise rejection or the Mai Fati, that, that people sometimes suit. Uh, in the Sabali case, yes, you may look at it and think, well, this is so black and white. But let me tell you something. If, if the law was black and white, we would not have courts. We wouldn't have judges and we wouldn't have lawyers because everything is black and white. The law isn't black and white because the law can say A, B, and C. When it means A, B, and C in terms of text, but it doesn't mean A, B, and C in terms of application. So, so, so the application uh, in terms of the Sabali application um, to cross the decision of the IEC uh, was not frivolous at all. Uh, we believe that there was significant merit uh, in, in our application. And I, even now, you know, I, don't, I may be wrong, but sometimes I tell myself that the judge may have been troubled 
uh, by that. That perhaps there were times when he agreed with us, and there were times that perhaps he was like, even if I agree with them legally, I have to think about the consequences. Because again, um, if this decision was, was, was made in favor of Sabali, you have to think about the consequence for all the other individuals who uh, recommendations were made, uh, both the TRRs in the Janet Commission and other commissions. So sometimes I think judges also look at not only the law, but sometimes they may also look at the political consequences of their decisions as well. But I, f I believe there was, there was merit um, in, in Sabali's application. So now, now let me ask you about I mean, your view of the country's judicial uh, system. I mean, if you look at it um, um, all together, mm -hmm. uh, how, what is your view? How do you see our judi judicial system? I mean, because I'm asking you this because I've seen supporters of Mr. Savali that day in mm -hmm. court, including mm -hmm. top chieftains, mm -hmm. you have said, for example, mm -hmm. saying these people are under orders, mm -hmm. and the High Court was under orders mm -hmm. that President Adamaboro is trying to bring back what for the mm -hmm. uh, used to uh, yeah. uh, do in mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. Well, in all fairness, if you look at what's happened since 2017, the Yakumba Jete ruling, the Rohimalik law, uh, the 54 million, and uh, the Ismail Asisi and several others kind of demonstrate that our, our, our judiciary is independent. Uh, and, no, no issue and, and I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. However, there is this perception by the public, something. even this matter, even family members um, that I spoke to over the weekend were like, we knew there was no way you were gonna, you were gonna win this, and you know, so. I so, think decisions are thinking like that. But, but I think, I think that maybe because of the, for Sabali's case, even though we didn't go to court to look at the, the, the we didn't go to court to look at the substantive issues of, of, of the Janet Commission recommendation. That, that, that is before the Court of Appeal. But, but if you just look at the application, you know, um, the Attorney General, being the chief, uh, princ the principal advisor of the government, in twenty in in June or July 2020, that is after the, the ruling by the Court of Appeal in the same Janet Commission uh, matters, um, said that 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 they were not going to enforce the Janet Commission's um, findings until the final determination of the appeals, um, and in the in the judgment. Actually, in a ruling by the Supreme Court in July 2021, um, the Supreme Court actually referred uh, to this undertaking by the Attorney General, because otherwise, because we we should never have actually been here. Somebody would have been able to contest because in in 2019 we filed for a stay of execution of the findings. The Court of Appeal disagreed because they said the Janet, well Commission inquiry findings are not capable of being stayed. But that decision has been um, overturned uh, by the Supreme Court. So we, ordinarily, we should have gone back to court, make a fresh application uh, to be looked at merit. Um, but we didn't. And the Supreme Court, in that, that the, the one I told you about in July 2021, was in relation to Karafi. And, 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 and they said, well, if, they, if all these matters had to go back to the Court of Appeal, that will cause a significant backlog, delay in cases. Remember, the, the Court of Appeal is not only dealing with the commission uh, cases, but over other uh, appeal matters as well. But because the AG had made an undertaking, and the AG being the, 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 the chief or the principal advisor of the government, that, that that was going to be the end of it. So, so, so the minister is saying that we're not going to do anything about these things, but then you've got the IEC, which is a public body, going on and, and doing that. That is one. But also, I think people may also have this perception. I, I personally think that the, the, the judiciary is, is independent um, and, and insulated from political interference. But, but the people who make some of these claims, you have, to, you have to be sympathetic to those views. Because if you look at the simple application, the Minister of Finance is implicated in the same report. In fact, that's what, that's what I was going to ask. The, 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 exactly. Was that something that you raised in your argument? No, no, we didn't at all. We didn't. You know what happened? This, why, this, why? Because this is something that ranked quite uh, high. Absolutely, yeah. Of, among, among, in terms of his supporters, among, yeah. among the citizens mm -hmm. who, who are sympathetic yeah. towards our yeah. what they will tell you is that yeah. this is selective justice. Yeah, absolutely. Like, a, yeah. B, C. C. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. deny. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no. The reason why we didn't is because, see, law is very 
complex and our application for this nomination was was based on a, on a, was to seek for a writ of satirality to, to cross the decision IEC so it had it had nothing to do with the the substantive issues of the IEC of the of the um, Jane commission recommendation so so we had a very thin line a lot of people actually said we, we even had a, made a mistake by even going to the Court of Appeal. They, 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 they thought we should have gone to the Supreme Court because they believed this was an interpretation issue. I disagreed uh, that, that the law was clear. This was, in about, uh, applic uh, in the, this was simply uh, to do uh, with, with application of that relevant law. So, so some of these things didn't come into play because, because, if, because we were not looking at the, the propriety of the, the recommendations of the Janet Commission. We were just simply saying, the Commission made its recommendations. This is what the Constitution is saying. Are they the same? And if they're not the same, that means they cannot be applied. They cannot be applicable in Sabali's case. So therefore, we have to be very careful not to, not to touch on some of the other issues. Important as they may be, uh, the judge may, may say they are not sufficiently relevant because the issue uh, before the court was simply because was the actions of the IEC wrong in law or not and therefore we had to really limit ourselves uh, to that uh, and also to be very careful not to not to not to uh, give any impression as to say, well, Mr. Sabal is in the same boat as these people, they are all guilty, because we're not talking about that. That matter is still what before is the... your uh, view that there is selective justice? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think citizens have a right to be outraged, because I think, I think what happened in Sabal's case um, was outrageous, because if you're going to... Well, firstly, the Attorney General said there is a memorandum on, on the application. Okay, uh, on the enforcement of these things, then, then, but then that didn't happen. Uh, that is one. But secondly, you have the Secretary General <laughs> uh, and the head of the civil service who is implicated. Uh, you have the chief of protocol. You have the the um, and, and several other individuals as well. Um, so, so, so definitely, uh, there is, there is, there is, there is. You know, the, the, the selective justice is overwhelming, so people have a right uh, to question. I think this is the reason why they believe, because since the courts are also an extension of government, um, that there, it is all a conspiracy. Uh, and, you know, and, and you can understand that, 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 that argument. But, but for me, as counsel, uh, I believe the courts are independent, and I think the decision of the judge in this matter was free from any executive interference. Let me also ask you about one thing that is very important. It has to do with the issue of protest. Mm -hmm. When somebody was denied uh, nomination, mm -hmm. you have some of these supporters wanting to take to the streets. Mm -hmm. I mean, Two of them, I mean two groups. Mm -hmm. they, they, they fought attempted. Mm -hmm. the, the, the police denied mm -hmm. them a permit. What is your view on this so-called uh, public order act? See, um, the public order act. I don't think the public order act is consistent with 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 uh, our position as as you know an emerging as a young democracy um, because democratic values say that, that citizens ought to have the right to go out there and, and, and protest, uh, especially against decisions of, of the state and, and public bodies. So, you see, I understand the police sometimes have a, a difficult job. You know, we have to be fair to them. Sometimes they have to look at uh, the circumstances of a, of a particular application, of a particular case, and the risk of, 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 um, of a particular protest um, turning into like into violence and stuff like that um, but but so so I am sympathetic to them when it comes to that but at the same time as well sometimes you get the sense that 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 some of these applications that that they reject are ones that are political are the ones that that probably you can argue that that the executive has an interest or the executive may not be particularly interested uh, in the individuals going out to protest so so i think the police have a a duty uh, to make sure when they weigh these things that their decisions are purely influenced by law and order and not and not and not politics do you think someone should a citizen should uh, go to court and challenge the legality if you like as a lawyer mm -hmm. the legality of the 
No, it actually did. Uh, well, so it, it, it went to the, yeah before he went to court and the Supreme Court in 2017 uh, or 2018. The Supreme Court said um, that uh, that it is lawful in a democratic society. Yeah, but 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 it was going to go away in the. Um, I think the the, the, the the draft constitution was going to get rid of it in terms of so the the, uh, the the new you know the criminal code the new criminal offenses bill which will be the criminal offenses act if if whenever it is passed by parliament I think that had kind of gotten rid um, of the because the public order act yes it is necessary and it is it is probably available in some other democracies but those democracies are ones where they have strong institu institutions if you look at the way and manaya has kind of like compromise and undermine the the independence and the credibility of the police for so long uh, and the police being the chief enforcers of the public order act and then you kind of um have the feeling that um that for us, and looking at our history and context, that, that we, we should have better laws that the, than, the, than, the, um, than the Public Order Act. It's a colonial law. I think it is, it is, um, it is uh, inimical to, 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 to the rights to free movement and, and assembly and protest and stuff like that. So let me also ask you uh, this then. As someone who is also interested in human rights issues mm -hmm. matters, in terms of how the police go about handling or managing protest situations, because there's been a lot of talk around mm -hmm. police brutality too. I mean, uh, what, what, what do you read? See, okay. Again, um, sometimes the, the police, the PIU, are thrust into an incident. Uh, people are throwing stones and stuff like that. But that's why it is not my job, it is not your job, because we may just act angrily you know uh, these people are trained they're supposed to be professionals so if you look at the day of the 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 rejection of of Sabali in Brikama there were videos of of a young man surrounded by four or five PIU five or six PIU uh, at which point he was contained he no longer f posed a threat but he was still being kicked severely um, if you look at the first part of the video, it was the young man who first started attacking. No, no, but regardless, yes. no, regardless, no, but, but at, at any point, what when he was contained? Yes. Once he was contained, you know, this is see the, the use of reasonable force. Absolutely, should, should, should no longer be applicable because that the the force should only be to the point that that person is still able to present that imminent risk. But but, but as long as uh, that person is um, is contained. But again, if you look at during the uh, some of the troubles during the uh, the election uh, day after election, Karaba Avenue, the woman who was kind of touched in a, in a, in a sexually uh, compromising manner and, and stuff like that. So, and, and again, when you go back to 2000 and 2019, when, when I think there were, there were protests against, um, against uh, anti-crime unit uh, as well, Farabai incident. I am not saying people should go out there and, and engage in acts of vandalism and lawlessness. They shouldn't, and anybody who is caught doing that should be caught and and the door should be should be dealt with. I'm not saying this should be pressed because sometimes prosecutions are not really the best in, in, in those circumstances. However, when we deploy the PIU, I think our primary objective, so far as the PIU is concerned, is to try and and contain the crowd and stabilize and ensure there is law and order. But but it looks like we have this mentality, and that is the fact. We have this mentality that that when the PIU is deployed, we have to so force an aggression. These are these are professional. They are they are highly trained. Okay, so so and that's why they are deployed. That's why the military are not deployed. That's why the conventional police are not deployed. But the PIU, because I'm guessing the PIU go through rigorous training in terms of crowd control um, and, and stuff like that. So, so, you know, we have to, you know, d democracy is a difficult affair. But the issue is, um, when the PIU deployed and they're confronted with an angry mob and crowd, they have to really show restraint. That is the, the means of, of professionalism, the means of matured security service and the democracy as well. Because otherwise, the fact that you have a gun, you're going to shoot willy-nilly. But you have to exercise restraint. You know? So I, think this, I know this is easier said than done. But I think our police need to be really 
trained and educated um, in terms of their relationship with, with, with the public. Barista Fatih, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ramadan, so, uh, <laughs> thank you. We will end it here. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much thank for you. coming on my show tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you very no much. problem. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That is